our first guest that we're going to introduce you to right now is so successful. Maybe to him it, it is just a, a fun game, everything that he's been planning, a very young... I guess I can call you an entrepreneur, Abbott, because really what you've put together in Guelph is, is becoming a big organization. And we're talking about Student Reach. It's a group for students that started off in Guelph, and the young gentleman you're about to meet is really one of the key masterminds behind putting it all together. Abbott Varani joins us, who is the chair of Student Reach. Welcome. Thank you, Susan. It's a pleasure. And it, it's funny because we've been talking to you for, I guess, a couple of years now about some of the work that Student Reach has been doing. And this is an organization that continues to grow and continues to grow to the point that now you're looking at it becoming its own corporation that's exciting yeah it's one of those uh, initially when you started it up it was you know we're trying to send the message to people talk to people introduce the idea to them and then after the event last month with Craig Kilberger all of a sudden it wasn't us taking it to people to grow it it was us trying to keep up with other people <laughs> because ideas were just flowing in uh, different partnerships are being developed and it's just been an exciting process and we kind of just realized that okay it's time to incorporate and start taking those next big steps. Well, when people wonder about the power of one, this is really a key example, and not that every idea has to become as big as student reach has, but this was an idea that you started with back in, I think it was 2005, as a student in a high school in Guelph who looked around at social justice issues around the world globally and thought, there's gotta be something I can do. And that's kind of how student reach got its start back then. Yeah, and even though that's kind of where it started, that's also the idea behind the entire organization is that a student can simply say, I want to make a difference, and there's different opportunities for them to actually do so. And uh, just yesterday, I was at Aberfoyle receiving a gift from the school as a donation, and it was simply a group of students saw the benefit, they saw what Student Reach was about, and they wanted to put something together. And they just went through the steps, fundraised money, and had a cause to give it towards. And that, it's that refreshing that anybody, whether it's elementary school, whether it's high school, whether it's university, they are able to, and they're passionate about it while they do so. Well, it's able to is part of it, but the willingness to do it and the eagerness to do it is, is what separates the sheep from the goats. You know? Yeah, I think most students, and even adults, are willing and eager to do it. I think often it's simply that it's not as easy as they might realize. You know, we talk about how easy it is to reach out where it doesn't have to be something extravagant. Yeah. You know, you can pick up a can and recycle it or open the door for a stranger. These are all different ways of reaching out to an individual. And if it's simply joining a campaign, wearing a bracelet, whatever it is, it's simply a way to show your peers what you're interested in, share your message. Absolutely. And, and as well as difficulty, it's no longer about knocking on doors in the rain necessarily. I mean, with the internet, you can contact thousands of people in your in your in your pajamas sitting at your kitchen <laughs> table. Oh, it's true, and we've been really fortunate to have a great website put together, and it's amazing what that website has done for us. And it's a great way to not only give information to students, it's also a great way to make it interactive for them, mm -hmm. get them involved in the actual process. Yeah. Well, recently in May, you just had a huge event, and I think we saw a couple of pictures of uh, your keynote speaker who participated in this. And this was student reach from Guelph to Kenya that you had put together. And Craig Kielberger was the guest speaker. And for people who may not be familiar, I think many are, there he is with Craig's story. Maybe you could give us just a quick outline of, of him. Yeah, well, Craig started Free the Children when he was 12. He made that effort to reach out after taking a trip to Asia and he simply developed an organization with a group of friends. Today it's one of the largest and most reputable organizations there is. They've built over 500 primary schools around the world and uh, you know the result of that benefit was that we were able to contribute enough funds to get construct another school in the Masai Mara area of Kenya. Yeah, and you had to raise, I think it was $10,000 yeah. in order to be able to construct that school, which Student Reach did. Yeah, and the was, school is being built. The school is being built, and uh, Student Reach did it by uh, infiltrating different high schools and getting different clubs started at the high schools. And uh, they simply had a competition. One school came out ahead, but all the schools put in such effort, determinations. They sold bracelets, bakeries. Uh, baked goods, they did so many different ideas and so many different ways of fundraising that you just realized that the goal in the end was to build a school and everyone had that in mind. And how they got to it was uh, 
really special to see that every student got there a different way, but mm -hmm. they still managed to get to the same result. And you've got to see the ascent of it just being hyperbolic. It's the, the more it goes, the better it goes, the faster <laughs> it goes, the higher it goes. And now that you're going to be incorporated, it's just going to... Yeah, and you know that's the hope. We've started running workshops at elementary schools. We're sending out packages with Engineers Without Borders to the Waterloo, Kitchener, Guelph, Cambridge region in August. We've also started public speaking. I've been invited to a school in Montreal next September. Lots of different exciting things are just kind of throwing themselves our way now. And but in the meantime, if you're trying to get in touch with Abbott during the summertime, it might be a little bit difficult because he's going to be traveling. You yourself going on, it's like a work placement for the summer to Tanzania? Yeah, I am uh, I'm taking a stop in Uganda on the way to visit some own family areas that I, my parents haven't gone back to in over 30 years. And then I'll be working at a primary school in Tanzania for uh, six weeks. And it's, you know, a simple way to put it is I'm 80 kilometers away from the closest ATM machine. <laughs> so <laughs> That's Canadian terms so that we can relate to that. Exactly. It's, it's going to be quite a challenge. And I'm teaching young children. And there's a language barrier. And it's going to be one of those experiences that I'll continue to reflect back on, I'm sure. And, and you've got to be 13,000 miles away from the nearest Tim Hortons, so. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah, probably. I'm going to really miss those French vanillas. <laughs> but when you come back, take lots of pictures and join us again so that we can talk a little bit about your trip and all the great things that are happening for student reach. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to find out more, or maybe you're a corporation who's looking to jump on board with student reach right now, the website is the best way to get in touch with them, and there it is right there. Congratulations, Abbott, for all the great work that you've done. And, have an exciting summer in Tanzania. Thank you. Susan. Learning Swahili. Precisely. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. How would you say thank you in Swahili? Asante. 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 There we go. Asante.